This is Cult Faction Podcast, episode number 11, Heels, Teeth and Eternal Beef. (laughs) Ah, Superman. Hello and welcome to the Cult Faction Podcast, episode number 11, Heels, Teeth and Eternal Beef. Leading the charge today is me, Brett Summers, and I am accompanied by... Paul Hawkins. Damien Hicks. We're definitely sticking to our surnames, I'm liking it. Or it's trying to like now. it. It's, it's just a thing don't, now. I don't know. It doesn't sit right with me, but... Yep. But people with one sound name, like, are either really famous or just hated or share. Paul even chucks his initial in because he's a bit more pompous, so it's okay. I didn't do that. And I don't, I don't say it, it's just what when I write a review, it's Paul W. Hawkins. Answers on a postcard what the W stands for. Right then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Funny guy. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Cheap, I know. I apologise. So anyway, I will start with you, Paul, as I feel bad now. What have you been up to this week? What's been going down in Hawkins land? Okay, so so um, before I come in to talk about film and TV, out of the literal loft came winging its way to our youngest child, Disney Infinity and Skylanders for the PlayStation 3. Yes, it was bank holiday weekend. Um, bored of listening go on about getting new mods or whatever for um, the PlayStation and Minecraft on the PlayStation. Realised the fact that we had this thing upstairs and uh, yeah, spent hours and hours basically trying to explain Disney Infinity controls and the pre- purpose of that and Skylanders as well. And we, we, un- we had all the Skylanders figures and you know different mm-hmm. games. Did they understand what a PlayStation 3 was? <laughs> well, yeah. These, I mean, histori- these historic artifacts. <laughs> I mean, they the look not too dissimilar from the PlayStation 4. Um, the PlayStation 3 is obviously a lot more noisy uh, and gets... You were an early adopter of the PS3, though, weren't you? Yeah, yes. You've got the, 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 the big... kind of sleek-looking one. It's big, oh, no. but it's, it's the sleeky kind of ergonomic look to it, isn't it, compared to the the later models well i don't know because they did a slimline version when, when uh, it was, okay. that, that was really really cheap this, this is the original psc that was big and bulky uh, i mean but it, but it still looks looked good yeah like, com- compared to what was out there, right. you, know? you got the hardcore version for the proper gamers <laughs> not the not the fashionable ones that came later trying to be trendy we got that, that's right we, we've got so, a playstation 3 that crashes every now and again and loses its date and time uh, and you just kind of think well the, the, the fans going on this is it's only a matter of time before before we lose all of the sing star stuff that we've downloaded yeah, from it i've been there uh, lost everything <laughs> my I, my uh, my ps3 died a death years ago yeah, so. there, there have been many times I've lost date and time without a PS3, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so we wild away many, many hours with Disney Infinity and Skylanders. It was, uh, yeah, it was a weird trip down memory lane. Um, are there, were there any other old games with it that you dug out for them, or was it just a Infinity? I don't know what other games you may have had. Now thinking back, what what were you playing no, on that? No, I think I think we got rid of most of the, the rest. Um, but because we just kind of thought, well, we're never going to play with them again now that we have got PlayStation 4. But we just kept our Disney, Infinity and Skyland because we spent so much money on the blooming figures. <laughs> so, 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 so the throw it away just felt wrong uh, to, to my wallet. And um, also <laughs> never knowing what might be down the line with other children that may or may not come along. Um, so, yeah, that was my, my gaming um, foray this, this, oh, this week. Fair play. A- anywho. Um, got round to watching Mortal Kombat. Um, pretty much agree with Brett's review. It's actually quite a good film um, compared to Jiu Jitsu, which I watched a few days yeah, before Mortal that, Kombat. That was, oh, yeah. so, so that that probably set my expectations low, and Mortal Kombat actually uh, came in quite 
quite high of my original expectations apart from and i think brett you were talking about this the the ending just feels very very rushed um and like they're running out of budget and so so they just try to get through as many many fights as they could with big bosses um uh, again in quick succession which and, was a real shame and let's ask how many characters did you actually care about in the whole film and why and then, was it cano and why no. was it cano <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, but it was a shame. It should have been half hour longer um, to build up a bit more character development, and again, you know, to, to actually give it a decent ending, as opposed to, well, we need to rush this, but we might do a sequel where we can really spend some money if we if we get like more time and budget for for that one. Um, but as I said, yeah, it's better than jujitsu. I also started watching Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah no, I was actually quite quite surprised and pleased. By I, th- I think the first three or four that, that I've watched, um, it wasn't as um, um, saccharine sweet as, a, as a, a, I think I was kind of expecting it to be with the bromance um, bet- between Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, and the, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I will be watching more. Excellent news. Um, but again, again, I appreciate we, we've spoken about this a few times. So, so rushing on to the next one um amazon so did some watching of amazon prime and netflix um and from netflix couple of films so first of all we watched a because it was bank holiday weekends up early with the kids we watched the mitchells versus the machines Uh, this apparently i've been told at school by the kids that i need to see this to quote i think the trailer makes it look quite good i haven't watched it yet but I didn't have a clue. I'm on the edge of my seat screen, now. But the, but the advert came up and I was like, sir, you got to see that. You need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So th- this is voiced by Danny McBride, who, who does the, the, the voice of um, Dad Mitchell. He's, and also he is Kenny fucking Powers. <laughs> I'm quoting. Yeah. He's bound and down. I'm in already. He has been his say. Carry on. So this isn't a Disney film. Um, this is more of a, and I think you're right when you said maybe the kids at school found it better because it, it's certainly not aimed at um, the younger type kids that 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 the Disney films are. This, this is more of a more grown up with the, with the centered around the the teenage girl off to college and and the, the comedy that goes on. So so the storylines basically. So, um, sorry, so is it actually a family film rather than a? what they call a family film which turns out to be a kid's cartoon yes cool okay yeah so so the storyline is there's apple uh, i mean no, there's a a big tech giant <laughs> with, with with a personal assistant um they release a, a new version which is actually a robot the ro- maybe the robots um go wrong and try and take over the world uh, and so they pretty much take over all of the population apart from the mitchells who are uh, uh, a mishap family that just managed to somehow um, <laughs> save the world, or do they? Can, um, can I just check? Do they live in the east end of London? No. Is it no. a different Mitchells? No, it's, yeah, it, it, it's set in America. Um, but as I said, you know, it, it's um, that they've got no real reason to, or no, no they, they shouldn't be saving the world. They should have been cured in, in the first five minutes of the film or caught in the first five minutes of the film. But because they're so mishap and um, um, I, I, I don't think the, the robots know how to deal with them because everything they do is by chance. Um, yeah, so as I said, it was, it was a slightly different tone to, to the saccharine Disney films. And um, yeah, didn't pique Connor's interest. I don't think he's very keen on seeing it ever again, uh, but he's very young. Whereas the likes of Neve, who's under 10, um, probably would watch it again if, if, if forced. I'm not going to mention the fact that we also watched um, My Little Pony, the movie, uh, just to kill time on Sunday, but we did. Old, old school or Friendship is Magic? Uh, the, the one from three years ago with Sia in it. Oh, the Friendship is Magic and John Delancey and all that. Yeah, yeah. Not We're, seen it. Well, yeah, I don't expect you to. Um, you know. <laughs> There's no reason on God's clean earth you should have seen it, Brett. There we go. That franchi- but that franchise made some big bucks, though. And, I, and, st- and still is. I, I confess, I read one issue of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic 
and it was very clever because the whole dialogue in the comic was all lyrics of David Bowie. <laughs> and I was just like, they can't pull this off for 40 pages, and they did. And they were all just trying to, I don't know how they done it, but fair play to them. That's the only one I read. I had no interest in the ponies. I was just double checking they got Bowie's lyrics right. <laughs> and the final film that I'm going to talk about. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. Again, just just came to Netflix, I think. Or, um, yeah, it was definitely yeah Netflix. And this is, is Things Heard and Seen mm-hmm. with uh, Amanda Seyfried, James Norton, Karen Allen, and the uh, the woman from Better Call Saul whose name escapes me. Uh, there, there's other people in it as well. Um, but, but yeah, she plays quite a key. Character. It would be an even worse film if there wasn't weren't other people in it. You don't know that. <laughs> That's true. I suppose you could have not, a film only got about four people in it and still be good. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so shut up. I'll let you carry on. Sorry. Premise of that one, almost like a haunted house type thing. So uh, Amanda Seyfried and her husband um, end up going to a, a backwater um, county in America, um, allegedly because the um, uh, James Norton's taken on a new role at the college there. It turns out there's a bit of a backstory and that he had to leave. Um, but while they're at their house, it turns out that there's some spooky goings on, um, maybe some sightings of some ghosts, um, and maybe that starts affecting the couple's relationships. Um, I won't go into too much of the storyline. Um, all I will say is it's actually quite a good film up until the last 10 minutes um which feels like absolutely nothing to do with the the whole first hour and a half of the film and it was just bizarre it could have had a really good ending but uh, again they i'm not sure what was going on in in the screenwriters or or the the playwright or whatever the director's head but they took it to a completely different level um and it made absolutely no sense to the majority of the film it, it's literally like oh we need to get it back somehow to a picture that was that that pops up every now and again this would be a great deep way of, of going full circle and it's like well no you should have just ended the film in a really good clever way that actually hops <laughs> back to the rest of the film as, a, as opposed to trying to mash what felt like two films no not even two films like like a little um gcse video um or film project a 10 minute film project that they just bolted on to, to the rest of the film so and, take, and, a and, breath, and, take a deep and, breath dude yeah, take a deep breath yeah take a deep breath man breathe so calm, I, was just, calm, I was just thinking calm. that was probably, that's probably unfair Happy to place. gcse students um <laughs> so yeah it, it was a shame so i watched this as well i've said i watched it at the weekend and I don't necess- I don't disagree with most of what you've said, other than I thought the entire film was shite. <laughs> For a start, nothing annoys me more than an opening scene, it, like a set piece, which then jumps back in time to, to tell you how you got to that point in the first place. Proper well, gets well, on my was earlier. Well, well, this, was this was earlier. months earlier. Oh. <clears throat> I think something like three months, or I think it just goes the previous fall or whatever. Gets on my tits. Can't stand that in a film at all. On a supernatural level, it fails because the the ghosts, in inverted commas, don't serve any purpose really other than to be give you a backstory of the house that they're currently living in. On a tense thriller level, there is none of that because the two leads don't really interact that much with each other in a tense thriller kind of way. It's just uh, the part of a, it's just a marriage then you'll just see any interactions of two people in a marriage and there's no ele- element of surprise in the ending well, not even the end there's no element of surprise in that final third act because you know what character James Norton is from from pretty much the first 25 minutes or so you know what's her name is bulimic he's basically just a coercive partner and the, yeah, the final few minutes. Jesus Christ, what the, were they thinking? Yeah, is he in it? Yeah, James Norton is the is the no, lead. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Actually, yeah, he is. He, he's in one of the paintings, I think. So yeah, he does. He does um, there's a cameo. But yeah, it's based on a book, and I think I obviously I've not read the book, but I'd imagine the book does a much better job of 
of um, highlighting the, the trials and tribulations of a marriage and the, the situations people find themselves in with coercive control and stuff. But that's what this film is supposed to be about. But it doesn't really demonstrate that in any way, shape, or form. It's it's literally you. It's just implied in every in all the actions. There's there's no real you you know this James Norton character is clearly shifty, and like Paul, I won't go into the backstory of of how they got to that point of him moving and all that sort of them moving to the to the new place. But you know the whole I mean, implied it, thing is that he's he's a controlling partner and is is trying to do this. And there's a there's a scene where where they're laying in bed and he's saying, I don't think you should see whatever her name is anymore. I can't remember the character's name. That in real life, there's a, there would be a build up to that. There would be a, a, a more meat to them bones in that in those kind of conversations and those situations. It wouldn't just be, you know, plodding along nicely. But we're all having a nice time. Then he suddenly turns around and says, I don't think you should see her anymore. There'd be more to it. it, it these things don't just happen overnight. There's, you know, a coercive control relationship builds up over time and as different situations arise these things see those things at, take time it's just nonsense. absolutely right and also okay if they had just gone down that road and explored it a bit you know deeper and it was a bit more gritty then it could have been good you know, yeah it would have been a good thread it doesn't need but, it but doesn't the, need the spiritual stuff because it doesn't but again i mean they, they they allude to the fact that there's potentially a couple of spirits in yeah. the house one may be good one may be bad and maybe the bad yeah, spirit gone is gone taking through a similar him. situation to what she's but, currently going through but 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 there's no there's no evidence of this bad spirit actually affecting um james norton no. <laughs> I mean, well he's pretty like, he, like it before they go there yeah exactly but I mean, you're it's right. not like he's being it's possessed and that's what's the turning end. him into it yeah one bit at the end where it's kind of this the the evil spirit is is um talking in his mind or whatever can't remember exactly how it plays out but that's yeah. the only element you get of, of an and just comes out of nowhere and yeah it just comes out of nowhere so it's kind of it's almost implied that you know he's also been has been spoken to or manipulated or whatever through an evil spirit but it was like it before he got there i mean the moment <laughs> he turned up on the campus he's trying to get his end away so you know it just to me it just didn't work and they could have turned it around slightly with the ending but then it just went off on that random tangent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was just bizarre. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'd give it a, a three and a half before you ask, Brett. Uh, a three and a half, four out of ten. Oh, that's good. You're learning. Damien? <laughs> I'd give it a two. I mean, it needed to do some work just based on the, the opening first two minutes where it's... <laughs> Any film that opens like that is already lost five before it even gets going. So it needs to really pull up its socks to to then gain some ground for me. I hate films that do that. Okay yeah. then. So was that all your stuff, Paul? Yeah. yeah. Damien turned on that. Damien, okay, you started off with that one for us and nicely linked it through. What else has been on your plate this, this like week? We planned this stuff, haven't it? It's <laughs> flowing. We're on a groove. <laughs> so um, with. Uh, the uh, all the the drywall plaster board has arrived for the the bar conversion. So Please. yesterday afternoon, I I was moving eighteen boards of um, drywall in the pouring rain. Did you find when you knocked the wall through to put it up? Was there an ancient Indian burial ground in the in between it or anything? No, no, I'm afraid not. Damn. I mean, under the floor is an old um, inspection pit that. Ooh. I was tempted. To, I've, I've put the floor over top of it now, but I was tempted to um, start hacking away and see if there's any bodies under there. But <laughs> you know, time constraints and all that. I thought, yeah, just just leave them to lie. So, but yeah, TV wise, what have I been watching? God, what haven't I been watching? So, I finished Sweet Home. I don't know if any of you have started that yet. I haven't yet, but it is on my list. Week. It doesn't disappoint. It, Excellent. It, it, I lo- love every mad second of it. It just has to get a second season. There, there's talk of a second season, but um, nothing's been confirmed yet. But it's en- it ends on a, you know, not a cliffhanger per se, but it's nice set up for a, for a second cool. season. Has so, to have positive Damien. Yeah, it's really good. It has to be watched. Uh, I've been catching up on Big Sky. I think we, we talked about that ages ago now, I think. I've and still I've got, got all them. I've still got all them to watch. Yeah. yeah wait until you've either got a chunk of them to watch, or or you've got the whole season. Um, I don't think it's actually finished yet. 
I thought it had finished. That's why I started watching it again. So, but it, but it hasn't. But it's it's a good show. It's it, you know it's not groundbreaking, Paul. It's not um, anything we haven't seen before. But it makes good use of its location. The the characters are really cool. There's no mystery in it because you're you're seeing you're seeing the investigation at the same time as you're seeing the the crime unfold. If that makes okay, sense. So, so so we we know what's going on. But the we know what's going don't. on. It's not a hidden. There's no like a, it's okay. not a who done it. The, the tension, if you like, and all that comes from how they're going to get to, you know, no. from point A to point B, that kind of stuff. The dramatic irony. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a good it's a good show. Um, I don't know. It's based on a series of books, so I don't know if they're going to be making more of them. I guess it depends on how how well received this one is. But Big I, uh, I've been making my way through the final season of Supernatural. Started at the beginning uh, a couple of years ago. We've invested a lot of time in it, so we're damn well going to see it through to the end. This final season is nowhere near the standard of um, much, much earlier seasons, uh, which, to be fair, is no real surprise when you're on season 15 of something. It's never going to be as good as no. it was. Originally. After you've crossed over with Scooby-Doo, you can't go much well. Exactly. Yeah, this is it. That that was that was a, definitely one of their peaks. But, um, you know, it's good enough. The interplay between... Um, I've forgotten the names now. I know one of them's Walker, Texas Ranger now in the reboot, the longer haired one. Oh, yeah. He's the new Walker, Texas Ranger. I know that. Yeah. that he, Jared. The other one. Jared. Jared. No. Politically, politically. Yeah. That's what I mean. They got, they got yeah. odd names. And the other one is, I think, going to pop up in season three of The Boys, I think. That sounds all right. Yeah, actually. I'm not sure. I might be wrong, but I'm sure I've seen it. Yeah, he's image. he's the I think he's the sort of Captain America guy in World yeah. War Two. If they, yeah. well, if it's they... Just, it's the same showrunner, isn't it? I think so. Um, they're bound to be, he's bound to be picking his best yeah. from the, from his previous crop. So yeah, that's good. Doesn't take itself too seriously. It's just a fun watch. Um, uh, and I've watched two films. One we just talked about, things heard and seen, and also watched the latest Denzel Washington vehicle which is uh, The Little Things the trailer makes it look like a really good <laughs> noir crime thriller it's set in 1990 Los Angeles and it follows two detectives uh, investigating a string of murders which leads them to a stranger who they think is the guy that done it and it's just a kind of you know cat and mouse kind of thing but it doesn't really seem to go anywhere it's a really slow pace, which is fine for a, for that kind of film, but it's 128 minutes long at a really slow pace with no real chemistry between the two main leads, which is Denzel Washington and um, Rami Malek. They, they don't and that's see... a shame because they're both good actors. Exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 I was actually really looking forward to watching this. I saw the trailer for it you know, months ago and finally got around to watching it, but yeah, it just doesn't go anywhere. It, it and the the ending is is just not satisfying in any way, shape, or form. It's all in all a bit pointless. So I generally wouldn't recommend it. I would give it a lot more than we the than things heard and seen. Probably a bang average five out of ten. There's just something missing, and you can't quite put your finger on it. So, sometimes you get it though, where you got just two like great actors now, and they just Sometimes it just doesn't, you know, it's like the they cancel each other out or something, you know. Like yeah, it's a of... weird one. It's it's really odd. It it I said it's not it's not it's not badly done. It's not badly shot. It's not badly anything, but it just doesn't seem to gel. There's just mm. you know you're watching it, and you could just as easily like someone start a conversation, and before you know it, you've gone off and you've had that. You've been you've gone away for ten minutes, fifteen minutes, forgetting you're actually watching a film in the first place because it just doesn't it's not hold doesn't hold your attention. So it's a really strange one. And just checking my notes. Anything else? Oh yes. Well, as I felt, I let everyone down last week by not watching a a, a cult eighties classic. <laughs> I've watched The Explorers because hey. uh, I think we talked about or well, we mentioned it a while back. So I've been been meaning to watch it since we mentioned it. <clears throat> And it's just as good as I remember. Cool. Explorers, just a quick two oh, sentences. Only, only just, like, just, a, just a gist if someone doesn't know. Okay, so think of Stranger Things. So kids about that age. Um, one is a kind of mad 
uh, scientist kind of guy played by River Phoenix. His dad's an inventor, so he's he's got the same sort of traits. Um, and uh, Ethan Hawke uh, is is his mate, and he keeps he has these dreams um, of like a, a cityscape that looks a bit like a, a circuit board. Bear in mind this is 1985, so you know imagine what a, a circuit board would look like in the Tron kind of era, and he he writes down what this what this this dream is takes it to his mate who's a scientist who's got a 128k modem and uh they basically create a little flash computer chip. Kit. yeah <laughs> so they create some they create basically essentially this this ball of light this perfect sphere and it turns out they they can they it can actually fly so they end up building a uh, an improvised uh, spaceship end up going out into outer space and then meet a couple of aliens and fun and hilarity ensues but it, it's it's a charming film i think it's like i just had just mentioned um stranger things i think actually thinking back on stranger things i think this is probably i know they kind of drew from a lot of 80s films uh, that era but looking at the, the the three main leads in explorers you can almost directly transpose to to Stranger Things, it's, it's like it's, that's been the, that was their actual blueprint for the characters mm. that they that the guys are playing in Stranger Things. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's just a charming, good old fashioned family film. And even Mr. Futterman makes an appearance from Gremlins, <coughs> excuse me. Mm. And he's actually got uh, quite a bigger, much bigger part in this than than any of the other of those kind of era films that you see him in. So it's cool. Brett, you'll have to remind me of his name. I've forgotten it. I did write it down, but. It's, um, um, I'm trying to think. He died so long ago, didn't he? Yeah, it's um, Dick something, isn't it? It's, yeah. Um, is it Dick Miller? It's, that rings a bell. Yeah, but yeah, he's quite quite a, quite a decent chunk of time in this film. It's so, but yeah, good. I'd recommend anyone trying to uh, dig out a copy. I think well, well worth a watch. So what? I don't think I've seen that. It's one. It's you a weird one. It's buried, we've heard about it before, but it's yeah. Brilliant. It came right. out, so it came out in 1985. It was buried between sort of, um, I think Back to the Future came out the week before. Something else came out the week after. So it's it, like a cinema wise, it just got buried with two massive, huge hits. And then Probably. obviously subsequent... Ghostbusters or something? That was right no, not, no, that no, was no, no, that was 84. Fun, but yeah, huh? I know definitely. I know for sure that, that that Back to Back to the Future came out like the week before, and then like I say, there was some other big hitter that came out the week after. So it kind of got buried in that in its theatrical release, and they just forgotten about on a on a home, you know, what, thingy release. What? What? Uh, where? Where was that on? What did, was it on? Well, did I watch it? And I watched yeah. it on I guess Netflix or no? It must have been. I think it was Amazon Prime because I think I paid like three quid to watch it or something. I thought sod it. It's well worth. I'm I'm pretty certain from memory this is well worth three quid of three quid of my hard mm. earned money. I'm putting that on my list. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's just enjoyable, and as I say, it's good old fashioned family adventure film. Not you know, not a dragon slayer family film that's actually really just for kids. Because that really gets on my that great <laughs> grinds my gears. That does when they say family <laughs> film. No, it's not. It's a. We've film. learned today, children, that lying is wrong. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's it. That is my 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 week in television, fun packed as it has been. Okay. And what about yourself? What have you right been then? Filling your I, eyes with. I have been filling my eyes with quite a lot this week. Um. To start with, it was it was the finale of Invincible, which which was probably the most bloody, violent, devastating <laughs> ending of a TV superhero show ever. It, I've never seen even Man of Steel. I've never seen that kind of depiction to what happens to people who were stood by while two superheroes are fighting. It was, you know, like, you know, you know normally you just focus on that, especially the Marvel lot. Like, you don't often see a lot of like that. You don't see that the building. devastation. Cool. You don't do you see mean that. Man of Steel or do you mean the boys? No, Man of Steel, when Superman and Matey just literally. Oh, just right. like, I, I, just... I, I, I thought it meant like graphically. 
Yeah, well, no, no, I don't know. It's just like Man of Steel was almost like disaster movie porn. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, buildings just, going down anyway. But just graphically, but the, you don't really see much. You, but the, you're but right, you but see the, buildings collapse. We're, we're in some um, Invincible. You see pretty much everything. There's even one point where Omni Man holds Invisible's head in front of an oncoming um, subway, train. Sub, subway train as it all smashes around him because he's invincible and you just see all the people getting ripped to pieces and everything like properly like blood guts and gore then they, they, they don't pull any punches literally so, so it's, really, it's, a, it's a true family film in in, in every sense of the word it's, yeah, up, it's up there with <laughs> friendship is magic i will say that every member of the family gets caught up in the carnage that's for sure yeah. When there's one bit where he like saves this woman from a building and then it all goes down and then as he tries to pull her out he's just got a hand and her arm and there's like a bone sticking out you know there's none of this lucky caught her in the air when her neck should have broke really you know like all the normal all the sort of superhero tropes you think you're going to see as he's going to save one someone ends up gr grossly violent and bloody and you know people have said that they've gone over the top of it but i think hey that's the point and it's kind of making that statement about this is what really happens when things like this would happen. You know, it's yeah. almost, it's almost like, you know, they've, you know, there's been some horrible natural disasters in the last uh, sort of years involving big buildings and things. Don't want to dwell too much on that, but you know, it's almost like they watched that and thought, right, there's some ideas. You know, it, 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 some of it is even for a cartoon. You know, it's it was a bit tough to stomach, but it fit the story. It made its point well, and it ends in a brilliant way that sets up what no, might happen I, I take issue with brilliant. You, 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 do, seem, it? you do seem yes, generally drained it. by You did by, watch by, it. By watch yes. I've you did mention it. Season. You didn't you mention that. Well, because I thought there's no need you're going to, so I thought I won't, I won't need to. <laughs> I won't need to bring it up. Well, did you not like it then? I have, there's, there's one major issue I have with that last episode. And it's really difficult because Paul hasn't seen it, and there's maybe people out there that do want to watch it that will get annoyed if we start talking too much about it. But yeah, I've been trying been to keep it on days. Yeah, and I think it's only released on Sunday, wasn't it? Uh, Friday, <clears throat> exactly every Friday. Friday. It's only it's only come out the weekend, so if you know if you were if you were saving them all up or whatever, by the time this comes out, you still may not have, have watched them. But so you've got that all that build up to to what um what's his dad's name Nolan. Omni Man, yeah, Nolan, yeah. Nolan. So, you know, he's given all that spiel about what you are, what you're there to do, what what I'm here to do and and all this and he's yeah, the 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 crap is being beaten out of, of, of people. But it just takes kind of one one little flashback and one word from him and he and his his whole demeanor changes and it's like to that baseball yeah. scene. And I get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. You've got yeah. all of that. But it's, and it, that's all it, if there, if, but you got to think of it. This is like Act One. You know, it's no, not... I get that. But it, I, I just don't think with all of what he just did. So you, you know, you just described the subway. There's God knows how many mountains that get that get pummeled and and whatnot. I'm really trying not to tell you what yeah, actually no. happens. <laughs> you've got, you know, that's probably it's probably about 25 minutes worth of, of that kind of chunk of what what's going on between. Uh, Omni Man and, and Invincible, all of that, and then this the whole destiny of you know seven hundred years or whatever it is. This is this is just a speck in my lifetime, but it, it just flashes back to that one baseball game, and sees that one tear, and it kind of he just has almost like an epiphany, and 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 then what happens happens. This just to me, it, they needed. It, from, from yeah, I'm, everything I'm, that he I'm, just I'm, said I'm, prior to that, there, there there needs to be something else that 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 flicks that switch in his head. I totally agree with you on that. To be fair, and but again, I'm I'm waiting to see. But it's too late because that's already been done. It's, it's that's over now. He, you know, this, this character has gone somewhere. Is obviously well. That's that's what I mean. That's what we need to. But I don't know. I think you know the 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 fury the 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 state that he was in. At that point, it would have taken more than just that one one flashback to 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 change that that mindset. That's my only beef. Well, yeah. I have a number of beefs with the whole show as in general, as we've discussed previously. But you know, I as I will, even if I 
don't like these things, I will watch them to the end to make sure that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> right, Paul, we need you on this. You're our deciding vote on yeah, this you're one. Yeah, you have to watch it, Paul. Okay, okay, I'll get down on it. Don't let the kids watch it. No, no, I, I kind of get that. <laughs> it's only a cartoon, Daddy. No, don't. It, it gave me nightmares, so like, <laughs> and I don't have them. I live them. Right, yeah, so Invincible's good. I did watch Thunder Force. Oh, why? Why would you do that to yourself? There's because, no need in this current um, climate mainly, to make matters mainly, worse. Mainly because on Fridays, they get choice at school in the last lesson. And they wanted to watch Thunder Force, and I thought, well, I might as well take the bullet now. I didn't really have, I didn't have the, ironically, it's called Choice, but I didn't have one. And then that was what they voted for. And I do have to say, for a 40 minute movie, it's brilliant. I really like the 40 minute movie of seeing this little girl and what goes on, and then, um, and everything <laughs> like that, and the, the, the drama between them. The younger, the daughter clearly has the talent in the family, who's able to be funny and act serious as well. Bonus points for the Slayer t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, Slayer! And the kids are just looking at me like, what? I was like, don't worry. Go and Google it, kids. Um, really liked it. And then the sort of grow up bit. And even then, you know, the the strange, the estranged relationship, the phone calls, whatever, the drinking, all that kind of thing. The, the reunion, will she turn up, won't she turn up? And then, as far as I remember, she went to meet her at work and the film ended. Mm. So that was probably a 9 out of 10. I don't know if there was a sequel that followed on from that or not. <laughs> but um, that was about the last bit I remembered. And there's just this big black void in my head. And then it was the end of the school day. Even um, See, I can't even, even the point that you, you where you've got to what you're talking about I, is still indefensible as far as i'm concerned i was, I was fine there the until... cereal scene where she's pouring beer on it is it the milk is it the cereal is it the milk is it the cereal yeah. this goes on for like seven minutes jesus christ it's not even amusing the first time to eat that scene out for seven it's minutes is just the, stupid the, the kids were laughing so well, it's kind of I mean, you know, I'm, I'm guessing it wasn't for me yeah but yeah that showed and this was sort of uh year seven and eight so you know years so up to about 13. So like, but yeah, you know, that bit was right. I could take that. I could put up with that. You know, I was expecting it, some cheese, and there was a large slice, but I could put up with that. And then, even, yeah, and it kind of got all right. And as soon as it got to the bit where, hey, look, what, what's this switch do? I don't know. I just have a mental block from that point on and nothing else happened in that film and it ended right there and it was brilliant. I don't know if someone else took over or something and they got the work <laughs> experience guy in, but then it just turned into a massive heap of shit. And yeah, you you were right, but I had to do it, even though I kind of cheated, where it was kind of at work, really, and not my own personal viewing. I know I had to be in the trenches with you guys. I couldn't leave you in Vietnam alone. <laughs> I feel we should get the tattoo now, just to prove yeah. we were there, man. Yeah. I, I, I just don't want the flashbacks, so no, let's yeah. move on. And that was. So yeah, I've done it now, and yeah, I totally agree with you. First, first 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it was, maybe 30 minutes, was a really good film. And should be a TV pilot and leave it there. It don't even need the superpowers. That was just quite a nice little moody drama. It could be a sitcom. It'll be all right. Right then, what else did I watch? Solar Opposites is still knocking it out the park on Disney Plus. If you've not seen that yet, for fans of Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty, Bob's Burgers is back with a whole new season, exploring the relationships of a family that run a burger bar. Still another good cartoon that you need to watch. You can watch that one with the kids, Paul. That was a good one. If you've not seen that yet. Batwoman season two is still going on. I'm only on episode two or three now. I it is on the UK broadcasting time. I know America's on about 10 or 11 now, but it's really good. It's probably my favourite Arrowverse show at the moment. And considering I ditched season one after about four episodes, and apart from the crossover ones. Yeah. Um, this is a new out. Batwoman, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a new one. But they just seem to have really, you know, like, they really just tried to sort of rewrite the entire show and change the vibe of it a bit and it it's it's working so far because there's a lot more she just seems a lot more she, the the new lead whose name i don't know but she's really good and she seems to bring a lot more to it 
you know, there's a bit, you know, she's not just like a badass in vulnerable bits. There's a more rounded take, character. Yeah, she's got her vulnerabilities. Things have happened to her, stuff in her past. Also, you've got the whole how she's treated because of how she looks in the current America. You know, you get a bit of that thrown in, a bit of the sort of racial undertones. You get all the different... There just seems to be a lot more grit to it, whereas before it was a bit of a kind of a puff piece kind of... It tried to be gritty, but I don't know. I think maybe, as controversial it is, we may get hate mail and bomb for this, maybe it's exposed the previous lead but she might not have been as good as anyone thought she was. So, sorry, Ruby Rose fans. I've liked her in other stuff, but it just, if you compare it, it's without meaning this wrong. And it's its like night and day. But I don't mean it like that. And it's nothing to do with light and dark <laughs> or anything. I can't think of another comparison. But um, yeah, I'm going to dig myself out on that one and see what else I watched. Right then. So, Forces TV. The Ooh, greatest, here we go. The greatest channel that ever was. You know what's on there now? I I just couldn't even begin to to imagine what delights for TV buses. are serving up now. All I need to say to you is that this is Jack Killian on KJ no. and Good Night America, wherever you are. What time is this on? Is it on every night? night? Pretty much. Season two start. I've I've just I managed to get it halfway through season one, and I've just hit like record, 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 <laughs> and season two starts at the end of this week, I think. You can't just series link it, no. You can, but I think it links it by day because it's Forces TV. I don't think they've got that strong a setup that links yeah, it all yeah. through. I think it just tapes everyone that's on Monday then. Yeah, so I may be <laughs> revisiting my past in the later 90s when I was an American TV talk show <laughs> host at night. But I have been back to Jump Street. We're on season two, episode two now. Um, it was interesting. It was good. The highlight for me was that there was a drug dealer who had a dog called Voltron, which I thought was quite nice, <laughs> which totally kind of, you know, there are certain moments in TV shows that just make it a certain point in time that you can't change. And that was it, really. So that's that's still going on. Um, I have been playing Days Gone on the PlayStation 4, where I am a biker dude who's trying to survive a zombie apocalypse whilst trying to look for his girlfriend who got took away on the helicopter. So a lot of similarities to real life then. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Well, I don't remember a helicopter or a girlfriend, but the rest of it's all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so it, that's that's really good. A bit brutal in places. Is it when you say so is it shoot 'em up style or is it kind of it's, free it's world? more like a free world roaming that kind right. of went up. It, yeah, it's been a mass it's a massive um been a massive game for a few years by all accounts, and totally passed me by until yeah, this month, too. till this month when it was free on PlayStation Plus. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, is this any good? And then I Googled it, and everyone was like, this is one of the best games ever, and all that. And I was like, why have I never heard of this before? Mm. But um, so far, so good. And also, I've been doing a bit of reading. Uh, Marvel Comics have released The Marvels number one, which is kind of a... The review is on copfaction.com. It's kind of an outside of the Marvel ongoing continuity, but it's this sort of story that covers, like, the way it's going on by the look of it is it's going to be sort of covering most of Marvel universe sort of past, present, and future. And there's all different things with different characters going on at different times. Some of it's, like, 10 years ago. Some of it's, like, it comes out, like, last night. And some of it's seven years ago. Like, you've got four and Iron Man battling a dragon seven years ago. You've got Reed Richards and Ben Grimm working for American intelligence before they took the space flight that turned him into the Fantastic Four. There's all this different stuff. And it's obviously all going to link up at some point and be one big story that's obviously gone on for all this time. But at the moment, it's a bit of a sort of a weird mystery. Reminds me of one of those sort of the old disaster movies, you know, where you've got all different characters going on. Eventually, they'll all get together. But at the moment, you're just trying to work out how it all links. And all the covers by that are by Alex Ross, who is like probably the one of the greatest <laughs> cover men to ever live now, because all this stuff just looks so realistic and amazing. So well worth checking out. But if you're a bit worried about getting the issues, wait till I would say wait till the trade comes out. But it is worth reading as it goes along so far. But the trade will be even better because you know you're going to get more stuff with it and probably a few extra pages and extra artwork and stuff if you're into all that. Cool. 
drop zone. Drop, drop, drop zone. Welcome to the drop zone, where we'll be looking at the hottest uh, drops that have occurred over the last week. In the zone. Gonna, yeah, in the zone. So okay. that's what you're doing. You're sort of, yeah. In the drop zone, we're going to be looking at the latest drops. In the zone. Sorry. Have I just, okay. Are we in the zone? I can't remember. But are, we, are we in the zone? Are we outside the zone watching things we're being dropped in. into the zone? They're being dropped to us. And we're, so we are in the zone then? Yeah, in some way, Kenny Loggins is singing a song about this. See, now it's right, just, but that's just an advert for snooker on the telly at the moment. So. Is it really? Top, or Top Gun yeah. 2. You know, music is just, you know, songs that were once too dangerous to play on radio and now on in the breakfast hour. It's scary. But moving on, though, what, what also is scary is the super new turn into the Stars TV series Heels. What did you guys think? In what way is it scary? <laughs> in a way that it linked. <laughs> oh, right, I see. Fair enough. <laughs> OK, um, so Heels. New, oh, oh new, yeah. Would you like that? Would you like the? You, the yeah, give us a spill, right? Let's get this. this let's um, let's get the spill because that's going to really help. Heels is an upcoming American drama television series set to premiere on Stars. It follows two brothers and rivals: one a villain or heel in the ring, the other a hero or a face, and they play out in a scripted matches as they war over their late father's wrestling promotion, vying for national attention in small-town Georgia. It stars Stephen Amell as Jack Spade and Alexander Ludwig as Ace Spade, Alison Luff as Stacy Spade, and Chris Bauer as Wild Bill Hancock, Alan Maldona as Rooster Robbins, James Harrison as Apocalypse, Kelly Bergland as Crystal, and featuring Mary McCormack as Willie and David James Elliott as Tom Spade. He so, begins so, on Stars on August the fifteenth. It wants to go. I'll, I'll go first if you like. Go for it. Yeah, doesn't do anything for me at all. It just looks like a bang average family drama. You could literally, I reckon, insert whatever profession the the father's just died doing. In this case, it's wrestling, but it could be a funeral home. You still get all the same trials and tribulations as the two siblings try and carry on the family business. It's if you want to watch script, a, go it's on. almost as if, no, I was going to say, it's almost as if they've took like a script from something else and just changed it to a wrestling promotion. Exactly, yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what it, it's, it's not going to be anything great. And if you want to watch scripted wrestling fights, you can literally just do that on WWE every night of the week yeah. or whenever it's on. So. Yeah, don't do anything for me. I might well be forced to watch it because it's the bloke from Arrow, uh, Stephen, what's his Stephen name? Amal, yeah. him, so and the bloke off Vikings. Yeah. Is that Although, Alexander Ludwig? I reckon yeah. If I cancel my star subscription, she may not even know it's coming on. So. <laughs> Does she not check out Cult Faction on a regular basis? <laughs> no. But I think, yeah, I think the, the appeal, this is all on the shoulders of Stephen Amal. And I think he's had something to do with like. I'm not sure he's a producer sat as well, and he's he's had a couple. I mean, he wrestled for WWE for a match, and he had a match um, on a couple of other like pay per views and that in America. And he so he's and he did a lot of his own four. stuff. In, yeah, he's he's got, he's been patched in as a wrestler. You know what I mean? He's he's earned his he's earned his stripes. And um, but as Damien said, this didn't really seem to be about wrestling as such. It could have been about, you know, a band. It could have been about football mm. players. No, but that's what I'm saying. This is this is what it's lawyers. doing now. It's cutting in on his, his new kind of... He's got his bit of wrestling chic now, and this is what this is drawing in on now. He, he's wanting that to draw in those fans that follow that particular wrestling thing that he's been doing. So it's kind of... And I'm guessing like half of the appeal as well is going to be the, like, who are the guest stars going to be? You know, like in so-and-so was in the background for 10 seconds. Did you see him? And things like that, you know, like, and I think that's what is. So we're, we're hoping like Kevin Nash is going to pop up or stuff yeah, like that. Is that what we're, we're, we're holding I mean, out? I that, just, that, yeah, just... I mean, that's the thing. I think that is, yeah. I think this is what to the, to the wrestling fans. I think this is what they're, they're what that's their interest in it. And the fact that Stephen Amell does do a lot of his own stunts. And I mean, to be fair, that thing he used to do on Arrow when he used to sort of climb up by moving the pole and that, I mean, he did all that himself. So 
You know, the guy, the guy is a, is a fit dude. He can throw himself around I'm and handle that. I just, it just looks to me like a, like I say, a bang but, up yeah. family drama. But, and but, you, you could but, copy and paste the, any occupation into that. Based on the trade, it looks like it needs yeah. a cameo from The Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. It may happen. But yeah, that's it, I think. I mean, that's the appeal of it. That's what they're banking on. And then hopefully the, they'll pick up the sort of casual audience as well. But... I mean, obviously, I hope it goes well. It's stuff I'm interested in, but I just got a feeling. I just think if if it was about the kind of underbelly of that that kind of thing, yeah. Because obviously, they're obviously not they're not talking WWE, are they? They're talking they're the kind of low level regional. Yeah, they're the Duffy the Duffy Wrestling League. That's what they're called. So if it if it was billed to be something about that kind of the under yeah the underbelly of that kind of environment. But that's not what it looks. The trailer doesn't make it look like it's about that. It's about it's a family drama. It's, it's, it's Dawson's Creek with wrestling, isn't it? Really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's going to take a lot to to um make me oh. well. I say I take take a lot of work. to watch it. If Sarah wants to watch it, I'm going to have a choice. But although if there were, if if Dawson actually wrestled, I'd watch that. Can you imagine Dawson in, in pro wrestling? Getting, I getting, never watched Dawson's Creek, so I don't getting his, know getting his stuffing kicked out of him. Which I one was he? Looked, he was the the one that um um uh, Dawson the, the geeky one yeah Dawson. It doesn't help me because I never watched yeah. it. Um, James <laughs> Vanderbilt, the one that wasn't in Fringe. Okay, yeah, now I know <laughs> you mean. There you go. So we had to say Fringe, yeah. awesome. Yeah, the one not in Fringe. The... Okay, now I know exactly who you mean. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing yeah. his face being pummeled into the into the mat. That would be cool. Yeah, but he's know. not in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. He might turn. It's another dream but... shattered. He yeah. might be he might be the long lost spade that comes back, or or a wrestling promoter, a, a, a smarmy wrestling promoter. Uh, I think he's still stuck doing Hallmark movies. I think. Yeah, it it, it doesn't really out when you never stop looking twelve, did it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ralph Macchio. I like say in it, the end. Well, he had to wait a long time though, didn't he? Yeah, a <laughs> little while for that comeback. But um, yeah, so that's Heels and Stars coming this August. But again, they've started the push already, and I reckon before it it drops on stars, there'll be some sort of. I'm guessing it'll be with AEW that Stephen Amell will may have a a run in with somebody there who pushes him across the railing and they have to have a match just before the TV series comes out. You heard it here first, guys. Yeah, you did. Take that, BBC. <laughs> so right I think then. the general consensus there is, Brett, you're hopeful and you're going to watch it. I'm going to watch the first one. Paul and I are like, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to be forced to watch it. And then I'll just check it, who the guest stars are each week to decide if I want to watch it or not. <laughs> uh, we probably should, I don't, it, it might only be me that ever gets confused with this, but it's probably worth mentioning. This is Stars. Yeah, so, not, yeah, not this stars is Stars. The Amer- this is, this yeah, is, this the, is the Amazon add on channel, isn't it? Yeah, and the, Amer- yeah, the American channel Stars, yeah. And the Amazon, it's an add-on in the UK. Yes, you're correct. You're right, yeah. and not the Disney one. Disney one. This confuses me every time. So I feel there could be other people out there as equally as baffled about how this. No, works. you're right. You're you are correct. You are correct. Ones with a Z, ones with an S, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Which doesn't help when you say it. And no. show stars. Yeah, as as a show, it's <laughs> yeah, the <a> radio <laughs> show. Podcast. Well, that'll help you. Listen for the one with the Z, the S. Right. Anyway, moving on. Please do. What else has dropped into our zone? What's dropped in the drop zone? There's been a second season five trailer for Rick and Morty. Now, we haven't given Rick and Morty a lot of chat on here, actually. Is, is, what, what are our experiences with Rick and Morty? Never seen it. I've seen adverts for it. And I know that the characters are loosely inspired by um, Emmett Brown and Marty McFly's characters in Back to the Future. That's that's it. That's all I know. Ah, so I would like to issue a challenge to you both then to go and check it out. Might take a couple to get the get the thing of it because it is a bit. Um, What's it on? I believe I think the first three series at least are on Netflix. No. Again, it may not be for younger ears as such because there are no, it's some in the bits. same genre as it's like family guy and it's kind of like futurama sort of bit more bit more it's it's, it's adult than that adult, more adult than futurama definitely 
I have seen episodes of it. I was done a bit of a disservice. So you know, it, it's more more aimed at a Family Guy audience than it would be, say, Futurama or Simpsons. Okay. Yeah, you, you could sit Connor in front of Simpsons and not be worried. I, I do. Wouldn't sit, I wouldn't sit him in front of Rick and Morty. <laughs> well, particularly now that Ren and Snippy does, doesn't feature as much on The Simpsons as it used to a few years. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now give it a lot. Well, season five, I'm I'm hopeful. Rick and Morty have always managed to stay original and just weird. <laughs> so I'm sure that will carry on. But if cool. you haven't seen it, go and watch season one because you've got a little while to get to season five. Okay, so four whole going. seasons. Yeah. yeah, do it, do it, man. Right, next up we have got the trailer being released for Home Sweet Home, where it follows a family of four leading harmonious and contented lives when a mysterious visitor starts residing in their basement. And it makes their lives turn upside down as strange events begin to occur. Yeah. What do you think of those strange events in the trailer? It didn't do a lot for me, to be honest. I, I was annoyed by the soundtrack. <laughs> Thoroughly annoyed by the soundtrack. Doing what, a nursery, why? doing a nursery rhyme. So midnight. Yeah, it just it's 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 not creepy. It's it, it it's cliche. Don't don't do that anymore. It's not. It doesn't add anything. It's it not a John Roo fight scene. It's just pointless. And yeah, it's, I mean, had I not seen the trailer, what you've just described to me sounds like Parasite. So, is that what I was going to (laughs) say? I just don't, it doesn't do anything for me. It it doesn't look particularly, I'm guessing it's billed as a horror. It kind of, you know, the soundtrack would at least kind of insinuate that. Just doesn't look anything exciting. As as trailers go, it wasn't really selling it. There's more to it than, than that. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I concur. It's a meh. Meh, that's it. Yeah, meh. Okay then, we'll move on to our next one. Oh, we're rifling through the drop zone tonight. <laughs> I know we are. Well, we, we've seen it. We've made our mind up, and we are just delivering on our verdicts. I think the next one's the same for me. Me. Spoilers. Yeah, we've got there yet. <laughs> I mean, I've even done the bit yet. Right, I shouldn't have dropped into our zone. You dropped too fast, man. Ghost Lab is a Thai horror film that marries science with the supernatural. An experiment about the afterlife goes away when Gla and we, two medical doctor buddies, see a ghost with their own eyes for the very first time. This encounter spawns an insatiable drive to find a scientific explanation for ghosts and to find proof of the afterlife. Their fixation and reckless pursuit of knowledge will take them down a rabbit hole that will cost them their friendship and their loved ones. So I'm sure there used to be like an urban legend that if programmers hadn't actually seen the original source code, they couldn't get done for copywriting of a program. So, so this seems to be the film equivalent for that, for flatliners. Could this seem a just genuine take off of flatliners? I was thinking that as well. Yeah, well, I, think, flatliners, I think it has a flatliners feel. Flatliners crossed with reanimator. Mm. I would say. No, that, 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 sounds like, that sounds like a cool film. <laughs> but they're called Glatt and Wee. That sounds good. <laughs> it, 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 the, the film looks like a lot of Wee. Ooh, but it's on Netflix. It does, yeah, no, what does that mean? They bought the rights to show it. We, we talked about this last time. It doesn't mean that it's, you know... Uh, a Netflix original yeah, brought to you by some we, random Korean. Or, we or... have to establish the fact that there's there's a you've got you've got TV movies and you've got blockbusters and in the middle is a lot of Netflix films. They're not <laughs> bad. They're not as bad as TV movies, but they're also not quite as good as theatrical releases we would I'm, expect I, to see. I, I know that, but many people go, but it's on Netflix, man. So it just means you've already paid for it, so you haven't got to worry about. Rented it for five pound forty nine. And so, so thunderstruck. Exactly. Thunder force. Thunder force. But I'm going to be slightly more positive than Paul on this one. Well, you are known it, as the optimist. Exactly. It's it, it's an odd one because it looks. I mean, it's billed as a horror, but you don't really you don't really see any horror or ghost action necessarily in the trailer. And it's obviously he's going to experiment on himself. So that's that's not a 
it's a given. It's not. It's no no giveaway in in, in or any re- revelation in that. But so as a horror, it may not. I don't think it's necessarily going to work. But it might actually work quite well as a thriller. So you know, yeah. not not full on scare fest, but you know, some of these films, they they kind of they they get billed as horrors, but they turn out to be just damn pretty good stories that 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 rack up the tension and then you know have a decent ending. So. Like I say, that there's it doesn't necessarily look that great as a horror, but it may not that may not you know we're thinking of it as horror, but that may not be what they're going for. So you're right. I, I might be being mm. unfairly biased because I'm trying to compare it too much to Flatliners because it just genuinely did seem like a bit of a rip off of Flatliners. It um, does hundred percent. So you know you, you but, can probably mash a quite a lot of of those kind of films into this, yeah. and it's probably going to be you know that's what it will be but but it's it's also a hard one for a trailer to 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 get across in an hour, in one minute and 30 seconds the 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 build up of you know as you say the tension or or whatever you know so and you're right it doesn't come across as a horror as such it's more of a suspense supernatural thriller type thing potentially um and, and yeah so i mean uh, uh, it's on netflix so exactly I'll watch so it. the fact that yeah we haven't got to pay for it <laughs> so it's going to be worth what an hour and a half of your time, I'd imagine. Yeah. <clears throat> what about you, Summers? What what you you've? I'm I'm in the orange still at the moment. It, it'd be one of those I can see it being a a Sunday afternoon. Oh yeah, that's there. I might watch that rather than a. When Antics does it drop? Right. I need to watch it now. <laughs> I think it looks more appealing than Home Sweet Home. Yeah. The one we've just just looked at is it gives a lot more about what the film's you know what it's aiming to do at least. Yeah, more than Home Sweet Home did. Finally, for the drop zone this week, the Sweet Tooth teaser trailer has been released. The phenomenal cult comic book is coming to Netflix, and um, it well, the Downey's like been on it. it. Yeah, based on the beloved Vertigo comic by DC and executive. Pro- executively produced by Susan Downey and Robert Downey Jr. Sweet Tooth is a post-apocalyptic fairy tale about a hybrid deer boy and a wandering loner who embark on an extraordinary adventure. Created by Jeff Lemire, the comic ran for 40 issues between September 09 and January 13 and has been described as Mad Max meets Bambi and follows Gus who's played by Christian Convery, a young boy with deer features who lives a quiet life deep in the woods with his father, played by Will Forte. He learns many things from his father, from medical care to religious prophecy. Though though, his, though he loves his religious father, he yearns to escape and later learns there is not fire past the trees as he believes, but simply more land. So it's got that kind of the village vibe about it. I was going to say M. M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but with um, sort of the the hybrid thing, and it looks like that kind of the trailer gives that kind of apocalypse kind of end of the world vibe thing going on before of, of what they called in the comic. It was known as the Great Crumble, and led and the the world was like havoc in the world, and all these hybrids Sorry, started. I just I just thought of Friday Night Dinner then when you said that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's like so this this great crumble happens and after that some of the world gets trashed and all these hybrid people start getting born so is, i'm guessing you're going to get a bit of sort of a racism sort of angle in that of you know we don't like them half breeds and things like that which you do kind of get hints of in the trailer but i, I did read some of the comic but i never managed to mainly because like they just got really expensive pretty quickly. So, um, um, yeah, I didn't manage to keep up with a lot of it, but it was a big hit, and I'm interested in watching this. And it, I think this may be the next big thing. Yeah, I like the look of it. I, I don't know anything about the comics. Um, so I'm just hoping that just because it's come from a comic that no Cape Crusader is going to turn up and start well, saving no, the very, day. Very... I'm assuming not. No, not to, it's, it's, it was a DC Vertigo, which was kind of its own line of comics that didn't involve. It was almost like create their own, you know, like where they just did no, their no own spandex and, and, oh, sp- and spandex free. Yeah, spandex cool. free. Yeah, so 
I'm willing to give it a shot, even though it is based on a comic book. Paul. Yeah, so the I know the comics have got a, a huge following, so it'll be interesting to see if it lives up to fan expectations. Um, and I'm assuming that they're going to have to follow it quite, um, I was going to say religiously then, but, but to, 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 so they don't get any kickback, I'm sure there's going to be more than just a little nod to the graphic novels or, or comics. Um, I wasn't blown away by the trailer because I, I don't know. I was just kind of expecting more, but that maybe maybe unfairly so. You know, when you when you read the synopsis of like an apocalyptic world, I, 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 in my head I was kind of thinking. But it's only the it's only the the teaser trailer. No, exactly. So there will be a no, bigger no, no, one. No, no, so, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, to no, be exactly. fair, it, it gave us more. That teaser trailer I, I was, gives us more than saying. Jupiter's legacy I'm, teaser. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm just yeah, I'm just yeah. No, I'm just. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so, just informing what you're saying. That's okay. I mean, I, I, I will watch it. Fight. Um, it. It's just, as I said, for, from the initial trade, I, I, you know, I'm waiting for, for a bit more uh, post-apocalyptic settings and, and stuff. And, uh, and also, it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. As soon as I saw the horns, I just kind of thought, thought well, it's Hellboy. Hell, Hellboy Series 2, you know, as a baby when he first shows up, he's got the, the little horns and stuff. Um, but this is a cuter version of him, and, and I know it's nothing like that that popped into my head. Um, yeah, it's interesting, as, as I said, that it's the, produced by the by um, D- Downey, um, Robert Downey Jr., and his, his other half. So they, they've obviously um, taken this under, under their wing. Now he's not doing Iron Man or Marvel films as much as he has. And so obviously they're, they're going to spend some time and effort making sure that hopefully this is um, good as well, working with the, the rest of the crew. But yeah. Uh, as I'm just looking forward to, to the, the more extended trailers as well, so I can get really interested and excited mm-hmm. for it. The thing I like about it as well is the comic was 40 issues and the story's been told. So, they, <laughs> but they've got it. So it might not. No, they don't need. You, to... You've learned nothing, have you? Uh, and, th- and this is the, the, what we've been talking. So, this is uh, you know some of the, some of the things of some of the conversation we've had in the past. It'll be interesting to see whether they have a set time frame for this whether it's two three series or whether they just try and milk that cow as it were for for, for everything that they can and drag it out too much um but, but as i said we, we don't know them, so so yeah it'd be interesting it's hard to say with netflix isn't it because we haven't got a lot of there isn't a lot to go on no so you know with with all the with the 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 main networks the original networks if you like they would eke everything out get every drop of blood out of that well, stone well, most most series had to be 23 episodes yeah, for some reason didn't it? Exactly. and all that it was just like the, the signs are netflix don't necessarily do that this we'll wait and see but you know what netflix has been a big player what five six years now yeah so we haven't got that that form isn't necessarily there at the moment but you're right if it if it does drag on then it's gonna just be annoying but so hopefully, what was it? You but, said 40, 40 editions. It was 40, it was 40 comics, so it, didn't, it ran just about, <clears throat> you know, a few years really, but comic wise, you know, 40 issues isn't yeah. huge. But um, so I like to think it's got a beginning, a middle, and an end that so they it might potentially be like about three follow. seasons. Yeah. To tell the and story, and then if to, it's to good, do it, to do it well. Yeah. Scraping the meat off the bones. I mean, it, it, there's nothing to say as well if it suddenly makes big money that suddenly the Sweet Tooth Volume 2 doesn't come quickly out from the comic world. You know what I mean? It's, or it may already be lurking. We don't know. But, Who knows? But I'm, I'm giving it a thumbs up and pr- pr- the predicting big things for it. I'm predicting nothing, but I'm giving it a thumbs up. Thumbs up for me. I didn't know we were predicting anything. No, I didn't know we were getting thumbs up. That's a new one. No, I'm just saying. I'm, 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 I'm calling it. I just I thought I'd carry on that little a... motif. You know, he, he, he yeah. gave it a thumbs up. I thought, well, I'll do the same. Just trying to think if, if, if they gave a thumbs up to any of the other ones or gave a prediction. I, I, so my prediction is I think it will be big. It's particularly the first episode. There you go. Because everyone's going to be really advertising this like nothing. I expect lots of Twitter campaigns similar to like a, a Ryan Reynolds type um, you know, aviator gin thing, but with um, Tony Stark just um, again just selling this on Twitter. Are you having none of the one of your fever dreams? I've got no, no idea what you're talking about. No, so, so I'm channeling again. Yeah. 
the, the, it's always a place over. Campaign for, yeah. for this. It's very smoky on his screen. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're going to drop out of the drop zone now and just open a few windows and we'll be back in a minute. News desk. The news. News items. News items. Welcome to the news desk where we look at news items and all the other things that are cutting their way through the cult talk. Uh, To start with, we have got the preview that's been released for Master of the Universe Revelation 1 of 4. It comes from Dark Horse Comics, and it is the official comic book prequel to the upcoming Netflix television show written by executive producers Kevin Smith and Rob Davis, along with episode writer Tim Sheridan, and featuring art from Mindy Lee. And this is the bridging of the gap of the original He-Man series we all love from the 80s to the new show that Kevin Smith and his crew are bringing out. So, um... This is what you need to get on before the show starts. And uh, as the blurb says, following a vicious Orlax attack on his father, King Randor, He-Man learns the creature is linked to the origin of the Sword of Power. To save Randor and put an end to the chaos, He-Man embarks on an epic journey that pits him against his lifelong foes, Skeletor and Evil Lynn, and sees Teela... Take the reins of a powerful legacy. What do we think of that news item? I need to see it. I, I, I did just, I've been sullied by Masters of the Universe in Space or whatever the hell it was when they relaunched oh, years the, and years the, ago. The new adventures of He Man. Whatever it was called, I don't yeah. care what it was called. It was just space nonsense. So, and I know everyone says this is going to be you know ignore the space thing it doesn't exist it doesn't it, it was it's never canon it's, it's it not never real. happened it never happened and all that but you know he-man holds such strong emotional attachment for me that this is gonna have to be epic in capital letters bright in the sky to be any good and if it's not then i'll kill them <laughs> Well, all I'm going to say is, reading between the lines of epicness, it does look like Teela is going to take over from her mother and become the sorceress. That's my what I think are the bit it's hinting at with her. So that would be pretty epic. But, but but this is the comic, isn't it? As opposed to the series. Well, this, this is, is the prequel. Saying. This is the prequel to the series. I think the series yeah, will yeah, start but, 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 at but that's a certain I mean. point. This, this, this is bridging this, that gap between. This yeah. is bridging that gap. It's a four-issue miniseries that will take you from the old show that you know and love from the eighties, that have many messages that help shape our lives and stop us talking to strangers, right through to the new series when it starts. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, so yeah. I, I, I don't know whether I'll actually watch any, uh, read any of the the actual comics, but it's getting me more excited for the the actual series. Um, it, yeah, I, I, and I'll just see if you think it's any good, and whether you know uh, he also finds a little green tiger cub in his <laughs> journeys. He's already got one. No, in the pre, you just said that's a prequel. To yeah, the no, new not a series, to the original He-Man, a prequel to the new season that's coming out, so it bridges that gap between oh, right, okay. original He-Man and new He-Man. This is going to bridge that gap. What's been happening for the last thirty years? I oh, know. I, I just got confused because they were look a lot younger than they did in the actual TV show. Yeah. So, I, I so, I so when to, Brett said it was a prequel, I, say, I, not, I thought it was like a prequel to yeah. the He-Man that we we knew and loved. I'm not overly enamoured with the um the oh, uh, that, to be fair there there are there are different covers that was just the uh, okay they've got different artists doing different co- I mean you can buy all the different covers to get the set etc. Got to collect them all. Although to be fair the artwork does look better than the the space set nonsense <laughs> that, <laughs> that that um it's clearly scarred me for life I didn't realise how damaged I was by it until we started talking about it so maybe I should book some counselling maybe I don't know actually thinking about it it will be my 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 predict- predicament will be helped by the fact that this weekend I will be taking the ownership back of all my He-Man figures so wow there is light at the end of the tunnel gonna be a busy day for you on eBay 
Oh God, no! That's not going on eBay. So no, 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 no. Just to look at current prices. <laughs> no, I know, I know how much it's all worth, but it's not. It's irrelevant anyway. Most of it's going to be used to decorate the new bar. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But let's move on to some other news items before we go off on a really okay. weird tangent. Um. Uh, oh, well, one a bit of news I'm happy with. We can just go through this really quickly. Invincible has been renewed for two more seasons. Two seasons, not just one, two. The Twitter campaign for you uh, has worked then. <laughs> yeah, I bet we get some money for this. Well, my guess is that it's a, it's a free act play. I think that's what they're going for. Hopefully that means we'll get at least, like I say, in a beginning, a middle and an end. So rather than just sort of, you know flash the, forward the, the, the shows we know and love that just get cut halfway through and no one even knows what happened at the end well, how long was the comic book run the comic was i haven't got it in front of me but it was quite a bit but you don't need all of that in there to tell the main story i mean that that maybe they're going to do it in like story arcs maybe these three seasons are the first arc and then they'll see where they are from there or something yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be interesting, but we'll, we'll see. But good news that shows we like, are, or at least I like, are getting <laughs> more seasons rather yeah, than like, just sort You of, don't speak for me, Summers. Rather than getting cancelled after like two episodes or something is what normally happens. This is good and it's over. <laughs> um, on, a, on a sad note, the comic world lost John Paul Leon uh, this week at the age of 49. He was an amazing artist who started at the age of 16 doing black and white illustrations for the old Dungeons and Dragons magazines. Uh, he trained at the New York School of Visual Arts under the legend Walt Eisner, Walt Simonson, Jack Potter, and um, went to, he did Robocop for Dark Horse, he did Batman, the X-Men, Superman, uh, Static, uh, Logan, Path of the Warlord, Earth X, which you saw like a bit of in the Arrowverse, that was the Nazi Earth, where all the heroes were like, work for like the Nazis, I think that was a crossover on it in one of the Arrow seasons, but he was the, the comic book guy behind that, he drew a lot of that. Challenge of the Unknown, yeah, I mean it was, it was not released at the time what happened to him, but it, it, it has been released since that it was, he'd actually been having a long battle with cancer. And um, I mean, if you just Google his artwork, you'll you'll see how how great he was, and at 49, how much more he still had to give. So it's sad news, Dan. We'd like to pass on our condolences to friends and family on that one. And then moving on to other news, uh, we had Marvel Studios celebrating the movies, where they released a sort of special teaser that kind of was like a sort of greatest hits of all their nice smooshy bits from some of their films and you know how cinema's coming back and everything and then right at the end of it dropped yeah. loads of new and dropped loads of new stuff about the Eternals and sort of all the announcements of all their films to come what did anyone take from that oh I'm so excited <laughs> and I and just, can't, just hide can't hide it. it I knew that was <laughs> coming excited about the Eternals more yeah I was a bit worried about that one, if I'm on I'm more worried about the Eternals than I am Shang-Chi. <laughs> I think Shang-Chi will just hold its own. It's a Kung Fu one. If you don't like that so much, you're not going to like it. And that's it. Whereas the Eternals, I think they're hoping to be a bit more of a sort of um, load-bearing movie. So it, I mean, hasn't there been some big studio people just saying that this is going, going to live up to the hype? But yeah, there's no messing around that they're worried about it. But... I can't remember who it was now, but there's been loads of quotes from producers and people that have actually been involved in it saying this is going to blow people away, which is a really big, bold yeah. statement. Which, um, which was even funnier because they brought all that out and then, um, I'm going to get his name wrong now, uh, the guy doing For Love and Thunder, which is also being made at the moment, Tati Wakini, uh, the guy that done Jojo Rabbit and For uh, Ragnarok. Yeah. Yeah. He just turned around and goes... Without it being in front of me, I can't, I can't pronounce oh, it. I know, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I, I want to say Wakiki. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. it, Wakiki. But, but Wakiki, yeah. But he turned around anyway and said, no, Four Love and Thunder is going to be the best Marvel movie ever made. Nothing's going to touch it. You can all shut up kind of thing. And it was like, <laughs> oh, OK. And I don't think he was supposed to say that, but <laughs> I think it was all like, you know, it's the Eternals, isn't it? Look how great it is. And he was like, yeah, well, ours is better. 
<laughs> so that, that'll be good and it probably will be because Ragnarok was an amazing film and I trust anything that man makes to be honest yeah Ragnarok <laughs> that's good you know, Ragnarok, Jojo Rabbit, What We Do in the Shadows um, yeah pretty much everything he's done is I don't think he's had a bad film or TV show or anything really <laughs> so keep going and one day we'll learn how to say your name properly Has but anyone any other... seen Wellington Paranormal yet? the what what? Wellington Paranormal. That's a spin off of, of what we do in the shadows. There's another one. So I've yeah. seen the TV series. Which, which, please explain. Wellington Paranormal. It's it's, it's um, a spin off of Dark, Sh- uh, Dark Shadows. What we do in the shadows. Um, to, uh, I think it's definitely, I'm sure it's New Zealand. Yeah, it has to be because of the accents. Yeah. It's um, set in New Zealand. It's about three. Or, there's three or four seasons in, I think. It's not great i've not heard of that oh look that up yeah i mean the 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 premise is um they're two regular cops that investigate paranormal goings on so think x-files but policemen with and supposed to be funny but the 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 funny bit is that is that then regular policemen and they investigate paranormal it's a bit i don't know the humor is just not quite there it's not as funny as it sounds i just just wanted to sort of counterbalance your view that that this guy um everything he touches turns to gold it's not quite as good as as it as it should be did he do uh yeah he's got a hand in it i can tell you he's not directed or anything like that because it's obviously a tv show in new zealand so it's not um it's beneath him that's not fair but um he's i'm sure he's executive producer oh yeah he, along those lines. it was he, the pro he was the program creator along with jermaine clement from yeah. um flight of the concords and my runner <laughs> and um men in black three and rio and rio too <laughs> anyway it kind of relies on that same joke continuously for most of the episodes and this don't get me wrong there's some really funny bits like things in the background or you know a bit like when we talk about thunder Thorse, where um what's his name goes off and shuffles off at the corner yeah yeah, yeah. you know it, there's that kind of there's some of that sort of visual humor which is mildly amusing but the whole it it doesn't necessarily carry a full season but they've managed so far to do three i think anyway yeah three three seasons of 19 episodes apparently yeah. and oh well i'll give it a look and see what happens no thank you for the information so okay, quite so we've right. Had that. We've had that. I'd, yeah, I'd never heard of that before. Ever. Right. So, okay. Last up under news items, we have got the fact that Jenny Zero has arrived in the comic market. Number one of four is out now. Brought to us by uh, Dave Duong, Brock McKinney, Megan Huang, and Magenta King. And uh, it's kind of a sort of kaiju, Ultraman-y kind of sort of show, sort of like those sort of TV shows that you'd expect and we're introduced to Jenny Tetsuo who's the daughter of a beloved superhero uh, who was known as Mega Commander Zero which is kind of a typical sort of name you'd get in a Japanese show like that a bit choosy and um, she's put her time behind her with the action science police and you know you've got her whole expectations of her late father and what he was like as a hero and she's accepted she wouldn't be like he was so she's walked away from it all and basically sort of spends her life um partying drinking with her hotel heiress friend uh dana shirton and a sort of boyfriend stroke jug driller stroke hookup guy jamal and um yeah so basically she's just out getting hammered taking drugs and partying all the time and uh something happens where she kind of gets called back in and um she takes on this sort of one last case uh slightly hammered hung over and on a come down and um some strange things happen i don't want to give too much away if you haven't read it yet but um sorry i thought you were going to yeah. break into the theme tune from <laughs> around the twist then for a second <laughs> no not quite but um yeah it is it's, it's pretty um a different take on the sort of thing especially after all the godzilla kong action we've had before this is like a different take on it and i mean the cover is her like laying sort of totally trashed in a sort of godzilla like footprint with drink and drugs and what could be vomit around her so um anyone has been on a big party 
<laughs> any, any thoughts? Yeah, the biggest part. Well, I mean, as most of you know, this, this I mean, it's, it's, it's not really my thing, to be fair. And so the, what you, I've read it, read the, the synopsis that you put on the website and, and obviously what you just said. So I mean, this, this, it reminds me a little bit of Happy. The um, no, I get you like the anti hero kind of thing, but, yeah. thing. So, but it's just the 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 thing about not living up to a father's heroic deeds. You know, it, it just feels that, that everything, all superhero stuff, is doing that at the moment. So, I don't know I might be wrong, but if it's if you tell me it's like 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 happy or 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 even the boys, I guess to some extent, if it, if it's in that kind of vein of of anti-hero and and um a bit of debauchery yeah debauchery is a good word for it then then i'll i'll give it a shot but if it if it's going to be you know that she's going to put all that behind her and she's going to crack on and become the you know the legend that she's born to be or whatever it, i don't know it's just it's just not for me no 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 offense brett sorry no 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 no, no, no problem with that <laughs> I, I think she's just I think even if she does sort of get more successful, I think she might celebrate a bit more. <laughs> I think we might have a sort of it party girl getting the hammer and then going to kill some kaiju. Uh what about yourself, Paul? You like a good monster now and then? <laughs> it's been a fair few years, but um Yeah, so so I don't know much about it. Um uh, I think I think the nice thing for me is is it's uh, at least it's a bit more realistic in the fact that you know it's not like uh, 2012 where the hero or most other blockbusters the heroes um, you know fully aware of their goings on has b- woken up bright and bushy tailed you know this is more of the Bruce Willis Die Hard three where he's getting over a, um, a big old hangover and then she has to go and save the world. So, so, so if nothing else, there's a bit of a different spin on things. Um, yeah, um, yeah we, we will see. I mean, as I said, you know, I don't know much about it, if I'm completely honest, but we all need to... Well, a... so we're already on issue one at the moment of four. I'm hoping big things for this. It'd be great to see something like this on Netflix or Amazon, in my opinion. And um, I think if going how issue one ends, I think issue two may... Um, just um, go completely off its face, and um, in, in a good way, I'm assuming. In a in a in a kind of <laughs> Happy Monday Sean Ryder way in Barbados. So is this actually <laughs> available yet, or is it? Uh, yeah, issue people? issue one is out now, or pretty much out now. Might be the fifth online, but the uh, well, I subscribed to it through my comic retail, and uh, I got it the other day. So I imagine it's out now, or they've sent it out early which is naughty of them but hey doesn't matter i got it quicker but it should be available online and, official channels, so that's nice. and, for, and, and for all <laughs> official channels yep and um yeah so it's out now check it out i think it's going to be big in my opinion so it's a thumbs up predicting big it's, things uh, it, i gave it a nine out of ten in my issue review and i'm um, but it's more it may go down in time but i'm expecting it to build up um so i'm kind of the nine comes from what's going to come next as well, what I think it's going to be like. You know what I mean? The, the anticipation of what's to come. So, yeah. And that concludes our news items of the week. I think that concludes our podcast, doesn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. Be with you. So, that'll be all then, I guess, this week. So, uh, please uh, check us out on cultfaction.com. Cult Faction is also on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc. All the links are on the main website. If you need to drop us an email about the podcast, the email is Damien. Oh, I thought you better read my email address out then. For <laughs> Hang on a minute. Uh, the uh, Our email address is uh, cultfactionpodcast at mail.com. There you go. So oh, let's I, I had a panic. <laughs> So yeah, let us know. Were we right? Were we wrong? Are we, you know, have you read some of this stuff? Have you watched some of this stuff? Let us know. Agree, disagree, or want to kill us? Let us know via email. It's all good. And um, well, so, no, apart from the last bit, that that well, that's not. No, good. want to kill us is one thing. Actually, kill us, yeah. That's, yeah that's we don't. Totally we don't want to know about that. Yeah. So cut out those letters, stick them down, and send them. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> 
All right. So, yeah, thank you for listening this week. Uh, so it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from me. Sayonara. Ah, <laughs> uh, Superman. We are recording. Do we stop now? Yeah. It's, it's an arse. Pretty good number two. Yeah. I just can't live up to this. I just can't believe they all died. Are you sneezing? Grim, that's the badger. <laughs>
Do you drop out or do you get ejected? 